Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'd like to introduce my guest today, Mr. Paul Treffrey. And Paul is the vice chairman of the Beverly Airport Commission. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Walt. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. And we're going to be talking <clears throat> about the Beverly Airport today. We're going to go over a little bit of history of the airport. We're going to talk about its growth and impact on the economy. And uh, recently, the airport has hired a new uh, airport manager. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but before we start, I just want to, and I'm going to read this. This is, this is off of uh, the website. Uh, so the Airport Commission is responsible for the custody, care, and maintenance of Beverly Regional Airport and all other municipal aviation facilities in the city, as well as ensuring safe, efficient operation under pertinent rules and regulations. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> it is. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. <laughs> now, now you are uh, a member serving. Now, how long have you been on the Airport Commission, Paul? Almost eight years. Okay. And your term is... is uh, well, the city has three-year terms. Yeah. And at the end of the three years, they, you know, they vote to re-up you again. So I've been re-up twice. Uh, and so. it's a it's a mayor appointed uh, yes, a position. Yes, it's a mayor yeah, appointed. Right. Thing. And I'd like to uh, I'd like you to give us just a quick bio of yourself because you have quite a history in, in aviation. Maybe you could just give us a quick uh, <laughs> bio of yourself. Sure. Um, actually, after college. I joined the regular army. I was in ROTC, went over to uh, Europe uh, in the tank corps. And I was an armor officer. And after three years there, my wife and I, Maureen, um, we came back to Minnesota. And the largest employer in Minnesota at that time was Northwest, Northwest Airlines. Airlines yeah. So I started looking for you know management positions and naturally sent off to uh, the largest employer. And uh, they liked me. Um, they thought the, the job of a service manager was very similar to an army officer working with the large unionized workforce. Anyway, they sent me out here to Boston um, on a temporary basis. After the six months, uh, there was an opening for a management position. And I said, I'll, I'll stay. We love that. it. And we've been here for 30, yeah. 36 years now. Right. And uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't change a yeah. thing. So so uh, being uh, 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 on the airport commission is just kind of a natural for you. You know, th th right. those are the, you know that you know that. Well, world. actually, um, how I got involved, my the very first board I was ever on, I tried to get onto the Lynch Park Trust Board, which uh, they get together a couple times a year and they help uh, plot out the the plantings of flowers and whatnot uh, at Lynch Park. I was I put in for that. Um, the mayor got a hold of my resume and saw that I had 25 years <laughs> of commercial aviation so working for the airlines. We don't need this guy telling us what flowers to plant no, in Lynch no. Park, so, right? Okay. No, but so the mayor brought me in. Uh, then he had about, a, about five or six of his staff in there, and they, they pleaded with me to join the airport commission. Oh, there you go. And I re reluctantly said yes. And uh, I will tell you, it's, it is a little funny that uh, I, I said, you know, what do you want me to do on this commission? He goes, Paul, there's there's eight other people on it. You're just a junior person. Don't worry about it. Now, it's almost seven and a half years now later, you're the senior I'm, the, person. I'm basically the, the chair. I'm the, officially the vice chair, but uh, we don't have a chairman yeah. at this time. Well, but it's been a it's been a, an interesting ride to say the least on that commission. There's yeah, a lot yeah. going on. Well, let, let me let me ask Matt to put up the first image. This is a this is a drone uh, uh, overhead shot of the airport itself and. Uh, and we're looking, if, if there's a line right at the lower, lower third, lower, that, that's probably 128 down there. And then on the, on the right, we're looking at part of Wenham, Wenham Lake. It's a tiny little blue thing about halfway up the picture. But that's an overall view of, of, uh, of the airport. Looks very nice with all the green and everything. Looks right? very nice with the green. Yeah. And you can see um, just below the, the horizontal runway, that, those large buildings there, that's uh, the Cherry Hill um, Industrial Park. Industrial, right, exactly. Bumps yeah. right up against it. Oh, um, right up against so, it. It kind of curls, curls around right. the runway there, right? <laughs> on, yes. on the right-hand side, I think. Uh, San Fonso Drive. Yep. And then, the, and then up uh, the, the Beverly uh, Emergency Management Association has their facility up there right off of uh, 97 and the road into the airport. Yes. Yeah. So uh, um, one of the things that you um, uh, sent me was some images, and I was intrigued by the images, and these were historical 
uh, images because the the airport right now the airport uh, uh, began in 1929, right? So Correct. we're what 100 years? Or, uh, Almost 100 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in um, a couple of years it'll be the 100th anniversary. We haven't made any plans yet, but. Uh, Somebody's going to be doing something at that time to celebrate that. Yeah. But let's, let's, I'm going to have you, I'm going to give you free reign here for a few minutes, but I'm going to ask Matt to put up some of these historical shots, Paul. And you can uh, let our audience know what, uh, what we're looking at here, if you could just kind of take each shot and, and tell us what we're looking at. Well, as I understand that, that is one year after the end of World War II, 1946, and it's one of the first um, jet aircraft that the U.S. Um, uh, did it say Navy? I'm not sure. Or Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Um, PAA, had, it says. Had built, yeah. yes. And it came to Beverly, um, and uh, everyone was thrilled. I mean, nobody had seen a jet aircraft before, um, but they sent it out to Beverly. I think it was part of a of a uh, an air show, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, but it says that it's that's... thrilling the crowds during the uh, CAP benefit. Right. So let, let's see. Let's uh, Next slide, uh Okay, oh, now this, this talks about the next slide. So we're going to look at the mess hall and barracks. Both buildings are still exist. So the next slide, um, uh, Matt. Uh, okay, well, that, that'll come up a little bit later. So what, what, what are you looking at here? Well, this is um, a photograph, um, and they all came out of Historic Beverly's um, archive. Um, the date here shows 1933. Uh, it just gives you an idea um, that most of the aircraft in the 30s were biplanes. Um, so there's such a long history of aviation at this airport. I mean, in the, the first decade was really the 1930s, and aviation was so new at that time. I mean, you know, we yeah. take it for granted today. You know, yeah. if we want to go to Disney World, we have to get inside yeah. that silver tube. We don't think anything yeah. of it. But back in the early 30s, um, having these planes fly around and you could come out and see them, it was a huge yeah. endeavor yeah. This and is, a lot of excitement. Yeah, this is only about, what, 25 years after the Wright brothers flew, right? So you're, right. So, uh, and now when, when did jet aircraft, when, when was the onset of jet aircraft? So these are, these are still... Uh, well, I think as far as... Uh, some military jets may have landed in the 50s. I mean, you obviously saw the earlier one, yeah. 1946. But as far as private um, jet flights, I believe in the mid 60s okay, when they so started, corporate um, travel okay, so started happening. Okay. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, now that's not upside down, but it just, uh, it's the, the the view. So we're looking at the the actual the operations center, the the, the terminal uh, here. Uh, at, right, at the, the administrative building. Uh -huh. On the uh, the lower left hand, there's a large um, white uh, roof. That's the new admin building. It was built about six years ago, um, almost entirely with uh, like all of our funding. Um, it's uh, federal funding, some state funding, and the airport slash city uh, contribute 5% on most projects. But it gives you an a, idea of the, uh, the, the small aircraft that are parked around the various hangars. There's 16 hangars on the field. Um, on the upper, uh, upper uh, left-hand side, you'll see there's that line. Those are all aircraft that are involved with the, one of the flight schools, Avier. Um, flight school is operated out of that red building. Yeah. Um, and then next to that, just just to the to the lower right of that little red uh, square, that long T building. That's the old uh, military barracks that was built in 1943. Um, it used to be there was a restaurant in there for 20 years, um, and then the, which was originally the mess hall. Yeah. Um, and and I think was, we have I think we have a picture right. of that as well. So uh, let's see the next slide. Um, Okay, this is it, I think. Yeah. There it is. The gray, uh, the dark, um, long building that was built in 1943. It was the mess hall on the on the left hand side and the long um, yeah. side. Okay. That was the barracks um, for the Navy personnel and even then Coast Guard personnel as well. And that still exists. That's still, still there. there. Still there. Still there. Um, the commission was going to, uh, back in 2014, demolish it. Um, and the city asked us, uh, came in and asked us not to. They had some uses for it. Um, we were happy that it wasn't uh, demolished. Uh, we're looking to upgrade it, continue to upgrade it, and use it in the future. Yeah. And uh, let's see the next slide, uh, please, Matt. Um, so this is uh, in, in 1930, this, uh, this gentleman named Lyle Halstead, who became a, 
a United States Air Force general. Uh, and can you tell us, so is this, do you just kind of... No, I was just, I, I picked this um, photograph out. Just, again, it shows a, an early 1930s, um, again, only a handful of years after the airport um, was founded. Um, again, it's a large biplane. You've got the uh, people there with uh, obviously enthusiastic uh, of aviation. But again, it, you know, we think of you know, the airport in today's perspective, but it's, you really got to go back almost 90 years, um, and that's what uh, the aircraft looked like. Um, yeah. So I just thought it was worth uh, yeah. Yeah. sharing with and, you guys. And the next, uh, next slide. Uh, and then this is uh, this is actually an over, another overhead shot, so we can see the the uh, the, the, the I guess the road um, uh, San Fonso Drive is there, and then at the extreme right hand up in the corner, that's Route 97. Correct. And then and then the road coming in leads to the leads to the uh, the, the Beverly Emergency Management area there, the little white thing, and those are those solar panels now, and then that comes right into right. the administrative area. Uh, where we had that that uh, uh, that other the the close up shot. Right. Uh, anything? Uh, is there another shot there, Matt, or is it? Okay, so this this is yeah. Tell us about this. This was uh, well. This is um, I think one of the earliest photographs of you know the first couple of years. I, I can't I can't read the uh, the date on there, but that's what the airport looked like. Uh, grass runways. Um, it was very short. Um, and they were in the process of, you can see going, uh, a little, little white area going off towards the uh, upper right. That's, they're trying to build a, a cross, uh, wind runway, but that's what the airport looked like, uh, originally, um, when they started laying the thing out. So there were grass uh, runways at the beginning. Grass now, now, did, 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 did someone own the land before and the city had to purchase the land from, from private owners or how, how would that happen? Amazingly, it was the um, uh, Beverly Aero Club that decided, along with the Chamber of Commerce, got involved and a couple other uh, uh, influential um, uh, business people in town that uh, they wanted to have aviation uh, in the area. And they went out, I think they bought some land, they leased some land, and then over the next 15, 20, 30 years, um, as the footprint of the airport grew, some of it was taken by eminent domain uh -huh. and some of it was purchased. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. Let's see the next uh, slide, Matt. Okay, and this is a surprise scene at Beverly Airport. Uh, are these things not on the carrier. Uh, tell us about this, 12 U.S. Navy. Yeah, those are uh, um, U.S. Navy aircraft that are all lined up. I mean, during World War II, um, that's, when, that's what really made the airport, uh, at least the footprint that it is today for the most part, um, Prior, right before the, the war began for the United States in December of, of 41, uh, the U.S. government knew that it needed to prepare um, its defenses. The, the you know, FDR and his administration were spending quite a bit of money um, trying to build up uh, our readiness. And the U.S. Army came in and took over a huge number of airports, as small as they may have been, um, up and down the seacoast. And Beverly was one of those, and the U.S. Army came in, and immediately they started expanding the, the footprint of the airport. They had plans um, to station aircraft uh, during the entire length of the, of the war. Uh, there was Navy aircraft uh, stationed here, and amazingly, at that point, um, they built a third runway that was wide enough to replicate an aircraft carrier. Ah, okay. And a lot of the, uh, what I read was a lot of aircraft came up um, out of a squadron based in Rhode Island that trained for aircraft carriers. And they would fly up to Beverly and do touch and goes where you'd, the, you would oh, hit, hit, hit the, would hit the, the, the deck the, and then power up power and take up, off, yeah. um, all to simulate landing on an aircraft carrier. Wow, interesting. Uh, the next slide, Matt. Oh, so this looks like uh, one runway in. And then another one being planned. Right. right. I believe the, the, the long runway um, is the construction of, at that point, the 4,000-foot runway. Yeah. And it was fully paved when they finished it. And when they finished paving it, it was the longest paved runway in all of New England. Longer than anything they had at Logan Airport really? at that time. Really? Right. Interesting. And you can see that the, the, uh, the crosswind... 
uh, runway, very wide. It's a dirt. You can see it's coming off towards yeah. the lower left corner. That is the runway that was used to simulate the deck of an aircraft carrier. Oh, okay. But, okay. Interesting. Even, but I will tell you, today, our longest runway is 5,000 feet. And this runway, when it was constructed, was 4,000 yeah. feet. And that was in 40, well, 1940. 40. So the, the, the addition of uh, runways continued through World War II, and even into the 50s and 60s, additional space around the airport was was added to the footprint yeah. and uh, lengthened the airport, okay. run, longest runway. Uh, and the next slide, Matt. Okay, we want to save that slide, uh, Matt. But I do want to I do want to show, and uh, maybe Kim can zero in on this. But the the, the historical slide you, uh, that um, that um, we just looked at are in this book, and then some, uh, a history of Beverly Airport. All the all the slides that you the the images and wh where is this available, Paul? Historic Beverly has those. Yeah, um, it was written in 2013 by Paul Larkham, yeah. um, a huge um, enthusiast of aviation. It's 24 pages, um, and it, it's it's a wonderful read. It goes from its very inception um, in 1928 straight through till. 2013, and it's got many more historical photographs so, from the. Uh, so archives. maybe our viewers can can get a copy of that and 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 see There's a lot of interesting history there that 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 we didn't get a chance to touch on. But let me ask you now, the, uh, as far as the economic impact of of the of the airport and and your employee, tell us about how many employees. What's the economic impact of of the airport to the to the region? Well. There are many businesses on the airport. Um, some of them are maintenance related. Some of them are charter flight uh, related. There are fixed base operator, um, uh, flight level aviation. Um, they handle all of the corporate jets that fly through and out of uh, Logan Air I'm sorry, Beverly Airport. Um, so there are actually more than 200, close to 250 jobs at the airport right now. Um, the total payroll, uh, these statistics all come out of the state of Massachusetts, um, well in excess of $11 million in payroll uh, annually. And they attribute $35 million annually um, that comes out of the businesses um, and the interactions with the, the airport into our local area economy. So it's quite substantial. At the, yeah. Now, now uh, tell us about some of the, uh, recently the airport has grown considerably, and tell us some of the factors that have Im impacted the recent growth of, of, of the airport and aviation around here in general. Well, the footprint is the same size pretty much since, you know, I would say the 1970s. But as far as the, the number of flights, um, it's interesting um, that general aviation for about 40 years after its peak, when I say general aviation, that's not the airlines, but it's just privately owned aircraft, charters, um, just somebody who owns a, a small aircraft, a single engine, and wants to fly up and down and enjoy aviation. Um, general aviation was at a peak in the late 60s and through the 70s. I think most of that was, you know, there was so many people that were involved in, you know, the military from World War II, Korea, even Vietnam. Uh, general aviation was at its uh, all-time high. And I believe in the 1970s, and what we do to track the number of flights, it's really um, operations. So one landing and one takeoff, that counts as two operations. Two operations, okay. So in the 70s, uh, at Beverly Airport, there was probably 250,000 operations each year in mm -hmm. the 70s. And it, general aviation just went into decline over the next 30 years for a bunch of different factors. You know, the, the economy, um, the price of fuel, um, the insurance went up, the price of aircraft went up, and it just became more expensive. And from the high in the 70s of 250,000 operations, um, it just continually nosedived and it bottomed out at Beverly in the year 2014 when we, uh, we only had 44,000 operations that year. Mm -hmm. So from a high of 250,000 in 1970s, Down it bottomed wow. out at um, 44,000. Now, since then, there has been a rebound across the entire nation of general aviation, again, for a bunch of different factors. 
Um, so we're now, you know, in 2014, we had 44,000. This past year, we had 83,000. Mm -hmm. It's been a steady climb for the last oh, six or seven years. And there are three principal reasons that we've uh, attributed to this, this growth. Um, number one, just the, the aviation across the nation is rebounding, which we believe is a good thing. Number two, um, a second in 2015, a second flight school. Um, came to Beverly, uh, Avier Flight School. Um, at the time, there was just one. It was Beverly Flight Center. Now, these two are very competitive. They're almost the same size now. And I talked to the owner of one of the flight schools, and he believes that they're probably the two largest flight schools in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people um, learning to become pilots, and many of them have gone on to the airlines. Um, and the other reason is in 2017, um, our fixed base operator, uh, the business that runs, you know, the charter operations that handles uh, corporate travel that come in, uh, even in, from international destinations because they can they can arrange for customs on call. Um, that business got bought out in 2017, and the new owners came in and they made a huge investments, made it very attractive and comfortable for these corporate uh, travelers to come into Beverly. So the corporate travel um, increase. Uh, general aviation increase and the flight school activity yeah. um, is uh, we've seen so we've seen a doubling of the number of o operations um, since 2014. Yeah. Now, you, at one at one point, the uh, the airport was considered a, 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 a aviation reliever airport, right? And tell us why that was. Well, and you know, I wish I had a really detailed explanation for that. It's basically we're a reliever for Logan, Logan Airport. Airport. Yeah, um, It's not like you're going to have any 747s ever landing here. Um, there, Lawrence is a reliever. Uh, I believe Norwood Airport is a reliever. It's just a category that I think if, if uh, something happened, the smaller aircraft, probably, you know, corporate jets that may be flying there, they would send them, send them over here, elsewhere yeah. Yeah. as a reliever. Yeah. Um, but I've never had the FAA has never really explained to us uh, in detail what that what that uh, now, now recently for. Uh, uh, I've been reading and in in, and because of all of this increase I've been reading recently that some of the uh, residential abutters uh, neighbors have been complaining about noise impact. So t tell us a little bit about that and what what is the airport doing to kind of to kind of you know buffer that or, or relieve that that situation. We're very um, sensitive to the fact um, that this increase of activity. Um, is impacting the neighborhoods around the airport. Um, primarily, it is the neighborhoods um, in Danvers um, that are closest to one of the runways um, that a lot of the, uh, the um, single-engine aircraft use. Um, we get more complaints about the single-engine aircraft and the students learning to fly uh -huh. and what they're required to do in order to get their license. And one of those things, kind of like we touched upon the, uh, the military uh, uh, personnel coming here doing touch and goes, touch and go, yeah. simulating an aircraft uh, attempt at a landing, the student also has to be able to conduct successfully touch and goes. And... What we understand is that it's the throttling up of the engines to get the aircraft back in the air, which I think creates the most noise. One of the things we've done recently, it was a wonderful collaboration between the, the two flight schools and some of the uh, residents in, in Danvers. Um, they got together along with the manager of the uh, control tower, they went out and they did some decibel readings when one of the owners of the flight schools um, did a couple of the, the um, maneuvers on the, the takeoffs um, that a student would have to replicate. And they did some measurements, right. and they found that there were a couple of things. And it was very, I think it was wonderful that they, they learned that we could probably change a couple of procedures as far as what the, the students may have to be asked to yeah. do. And that Obviously, could mitigate the noise. Then. Right, yeah. as far as where you initiate the beginning yeah. of a takeoff, all yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. But it's that kind of collaboration that we're, we're working closely yeah. with the city. Yeah. And, and I want to touch on one more thing, Paul. Sure. I, I know that uh, you have just recently the, uh, uh, hired a new airport manager that uh, that person is not uh, now are, are you able to tell us who that is and what that uh, tell us about that that process and tell us who you've hired and what what your expectations might be for this person well it was it was quite a, a, a process um, and we've actually gone through it a couple of times uh, while we've uh, I've been on the commission um, but we 
put out um, notice, notice throughout the aviation uh, field, mostly through the uh, Human Resource Department at Beverly. They really assisted and kind of led this process. But we had 20 applicants put in for the job. Um, we formed a uh, screening committee um, with the town manager of Danvers and some uh, Beverly um, um, officials, and we screened out I think 12, and then we interviewed, had live interviews, and also and so on Zoom um, with eight of them. And we came to the final selection of a young man who is out in Quincy, uh, Illinois. Illinois. He's yeah. working at a, an airport uh, a little bit larger than Beverly, um, a huge amount of experience. His name is Gabriel uh, Hannafin. And mm -hmm. we're really excited. He's uh, he's. About, I, I think I can say this. He's about to have a baby out there. So we're gonna we give him a <laughs> wow. couple extra weeks to, to help mom and you know, get, get settled oh, in. Wow. And then yeah. he, he's coming out here. But we're uh, we're very excited with the, the credentials that he brings and the experience. Uh, so we're excited. And now, when is uh, Gabriel Hannafin suppo supposed to start uh, the uh, his his job? June fifth. June 5th. Give him a couple of extra so weeks. Uh, April, uh, May, so about two and a half months, I right. guess, or something right. like that from, from where we're sitting today. And I know that, that um, the, the, you have just adopted a new, the airport has adopted a new master plan, right? And we just have a minute or so left. So, so just describe what that, some of the goals or some of the, the things that are in that master plan. And just real quickly, um, the Massachusetts Aeronautical uh, Commission um, in 1956 started having airports create a master plan, which would, would cover what is the airport, what could the airport do over a 20 year period. First master plan was in 1956, mm -hmm. then the second one was in, until 1992, and this is really, the, as I understand, the third master, master plan. plan yeah. and the intent is just to, to map out um, what the priorities would be for the airport over the next 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Principally, it covers things like, you know, most of it's all safety related, like what intersections are problematic for pilots? Okay. Um, should we move a taxiway? Should we have the intersections change so the pilot doesn't have to look completely over his shoulder? It's more thing, technical things with that more than anything else. Yeah. Um, so we're excited about that. It took three years. Um, again, and the federal government actually paid for almost all of um, the study, which was five hundred thousand oh, wow. dollars to complete this. Wow. Um, they did a lot of outreach to each of the communities, Wenham, Beverly, and Danvers, um, and then the engineers get involved. And um, the biggest thing that we have on the master plan is really the complete reconstruction of our longest runway. Uh, it's forty years old. If you almost you think about uh, Cabot Street, uh, there was a huge initiative um, to redo Cabot Street. Everything had to be dug down three feet. Um, that's probably going to yeah, happen. Something it's, there, yeah. Right. That's going to happen in a couple of years. Well, Paul, it, this has been so interesting. I think we could go on, on and on, but I think we, we our, our time is up. Uh, I'm going to put up, the, if people want to have a little bit more information, uh, beverlyairport.com, if Matt can put that up there. If you want more information about the airport, you can... You can uh, uh, get that at beverlyairport.com. I'd like to uh, thank my guest, Paul Treffery. Paul, thank you very much. Thank you, all. It's Vice a pleasure. Chairman of, way too short. <laughs> I, way too short. We'll have to do... When, when part, do you do part two? Well, I, I was <laughs> thinking the same thing. Uh, and uh, I'd like to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.